First question here is from Jay. Will Kinlaw be ready to go week one? Everything I've heard is yes, right? But you got to put Kinlaw on that list of potentially no for week one. I say potentially no, because her, uh, if you go through the list, Ayuk is a uh, questionable. Obviously, Debo Samuel is questionable. Kinlaw is questionable. Barrett is questionable. There's a bunch of these starters who have injuries, but don't have significant injuries and could be out there week one. So I think either all or a portion of them will be good to go. But honestly, like you throw a guy like Kim Law, you throw a guy like IU, IU has a hamstring injury. Do you want to rush him back and maybe have him re-pull it or even tear it week one? I don't know. So I'm going to say yes with Kim Law, but there is no guarantee that he is going to be out there because week one is going to be a very fascinating week in the National Football League because no preseason. Like, there are going to be a lot of injuries week one. I mean, you need a brace right now for a lot of injuries week one. I don't want that to happen. Knock on wood, fingers crossed, but the odds of it happening are very high because no practice squad, or sorry, no practice games in terms of uh, no overall preseason games. Um, let's see here. Next question comes from Carlos. Says, final score prediction for week one. They're going to beat the Cardinals, and obviously they'll be at home, but there's really no home field advantage, but they will beat the Arizona Cardinals. They should beat the Arizona Cardinals. But as we saw last year, Arizona's a very good football team, especially when they play San Francisco. They played the 49ers very hard their two meetings i think this is going to be a low scoring affair i say 20 to 13 is going to be the 49ers win just because again the odds of everything just kind of rolling week one week one is going to be like a preseason game it's going to be ugly there's going to be false starts there's going to be offsides there's going to be a ton of holdings it's going to be rough to watch but still the niners win i'm going to go ahead and give you guys my prediction of 20 to 13 san francisco gets the win over their division rivals the arizona cardinals you guys just pumped at the fact that we actually get football next week like they, literally this time next week, we will be three days away from the start of the NFL season. If you're pumped, type 4-9 down below right now. Just hit 4-9, spam it. 4-9 down below in the comment section. If you guys are pumped at football, because technically Texans Chiefs is one week away, but 49 is a little bit longer, but we are so darn close. If you guys are pumped, go ahead and type 4-9 right now down below in the comment section. How about this question? This is fascinating, actually. So Clerky Halo says, should the 49ers sign Muhammad Sanu? And this is a great question because it's not Antonio Brown or Des Bryant, or as you saw, surprisingly, Josh Gordon was signed today by uh, the Seattle Seahawks. But I, I, I mean, I wouldn't be against it, right? I would not be against Muhammad Sanu. Obviously, a Falcon earlier on in his career gets traded for a second round draft pick all the way to, to New England. New England is cut. New England does not like him. And this all stems under the idea that Taylon Austin is placed on IR, JJ Nelson is placed on IR. So they've had some injuries at wide receiver. The issue with signing Muhammad Sanu is getting him up to speed. And so I think they'd rather go with the guys that are already there who have been working in the playbook, whether it's Poindexter, Juwan Jennings, even a Kevin White, because if you bring him in, he's got to get the physical, he's got to go through the COVID quarantine protocols, and then he can get on the football field. It's too late at this point. So if they get through the first couple of weeks and they're struggling at wide receiver, then yes, but they're not going to do it before week one. I'd be surprised if they did. But I'm still surprised that Sanu was uh, cut. So, I mean, take forward that for whatever it is. But no, I don't think so. They need guys that know the offense. And the guys that are there right now, even if they're young, know the offense better than Muhammad Sanu would on a short week trying to figure things out before week one. Um, ET 49er, most receiving yards week one, it'll be Kittle, obviously, because there's going to be no Debo Samuel, at least. Okay, let me just preface this. They have not ruled out Debo Samuel. I keep saying no Debo Samuel because I think there's no way they're going to start him in week one because he's not going to be ready. But he could, right? Technically, he's not been ruled out. But if he is, then I think it's going to go ahead and be George Kittle. Wide receiver-wise, it's probably going to be a mixture of Pettis, Bourne, and Trent Taylor. It's probably going to be one of those guys. We'll see if IU plays or not. But obviously, the leading receiver week one is probably going to go ahead and be George Kittle. Um, easy one here. We'll go two for one for ET. Who will be our starting running back? Raheem Mostert will be the starting running back to the point that I said, if I can get Raheem Mostert, I have a fancy draft on Saturday. If I can get Raheem Mostert, I'm 100% taking him. Because I think Raheem Mostert is going to have a, an absolutely monster year. He got the, the contract extension that he wanted or the money that, that he wanted. He does have to share it with Tevin Coleman and Jerk McKinnon, but I still am a big fan of Raheem Mostert. He will obviously, in my opinion, without a doubt, be number one. Um, Esteban says, any chance to go after Clowney? No, it's too late, right? We talked about this last week. For a majority of these players who you want the 49ers to sign, it's too late. Now, you would go out for after, after Clowney if you were to have a mega injury. Like, if Nick Bosa uh, tore his ACL tomorrow, right? Knock on wood, heaven forbid. But if it were to happen, then yes, you could go ahead and maybe make a phone call to choose Jadavion Clowney. But as they stand right now, it's too late to get a guy in, to go through the protocols, to have him ready for week one. Now, if you understand that, and you know that it's going to be a little bit longer. You could sign him and then get him ready for week two or three. But I just don't see it happening. If they wanted to sign J.D. on Clowney, they would have done it earlier on in the offseason. The only way they would do it right now is barring an injury. And trust me, you would much rather have Nick Bosa on your team than J.D. on Clowney. I would put I, I way, way, way more have Nick Bosa than J.D. on Clowney. 
you are going to see a lot of these that you see on my screen right now on the sideline of the 49ers whenever they're playing week one against the Arizona Cardinals. They'll be wearing masks, and a lot of them will obviously be 49er masks as well. And we have some really good ones right here at chatsports.com slash 49 mask, the place to pick them up. Because even though, even though the players don't have to wear one, a lot of the coaches like to do it anyway because they know the spread is a very real thing in and around all the National Football League teams, as Fred Warner had found out just a couple of weeks or a couple of days ago, I should say. But we have some great op uh, uh, options here. The red, white, and blue ones to me are fantastic. Chessports.com slash 49 mask. Get a four pack as well. We can share them with you, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, or you just wear a different one every single day, whatever you want. So you know we're going to be wearing that for a very long time, unfortunately. So chessports.com slash 49 mask. Pick those up. Link is down below in the description box. All right, keep those questions coming. Hashtag 49ers, right? Use hashtag 49ers. Get, get the questions in. I'm kind of scrolling through some right here on my phone. I see a lot of really good ones, and Dylan's going to scroll through and pull some. My producer up there in Dallas. Whatever you want to talk about, whether it's 49 related, it should be 49 related, whatever you really want, ask me, hashtag 49ers. Um, oh, Sean, must see games by 49ers this season? Ooh, I mean, I think the Green Bay rematch is going to be very interesting. I think Aaron Rodgers is going to be ready to play and coming for a little bit of vengeance against San Francisco because you forget that Green Bay made it to the NFC title game last year and they were a very good football team. But they got basically embarrassed at Levi Stadium. I mean, really embarrassed at Levi Stadium, very similarly to what happened to Green Bay whenever they came to Atlanta a couple of years back, back in, what, 2016, 2017, and got embarrassed on the road in the NFC title game. I think he's going to come back for blood, which is not going to guarantee a win, but I think that matchup against the 49er defense is going to be very, very fun to watch overall. New England would have been fun if Tom Brady was there. Like, that would have been super fun, but it's not. But I'd be curious to see how Belichick is going to go ahead and coach against Jimmy G. There's some good ones, right? I mean, the Seattle games are going to be good. The Saints game is going to be good. Philadelphia week four, Sunday night football, it's going to be a good game. They have a lot of good games on their schedule. Not necessarily hard ones, but they got a lot of very interesting games. But I think the Packers, I think it's going to be a really fun one overall. Um, Trevor says, to start a cornerback week one. Okay, we talked about this about 10 minutes ago, but basically, Verrett has a hamstring injury. We don't know the timeline, although it looks like it's going to be day-to-day. -day. So if he's healthy, and to me, it's going to be Verrett. They've not, they have not announced it. They've rotated guys in there, although Verrett has played the majority of snaps. But I would bet it'll be Jason Verrett. Now, if it's not, then it's either a Mosley or a Keller Witherspoon. But they really haven't said who's been better because the focus has been on Jason Verrett. So the honest answer is I don't know. we got to wait and see what the injury report is going to show and what they're going to do with Jason Verrett as we get closer to the start of week one, which is really just a couple of days away. Um, biggest rival in the NFC West, easily the Seattle Seahawks. I mean, come on, it's, it has to be Seattle. Although, as we say, it's a really tough, to, really tough, tough division. Excuse me. If you watch Hard Knocks... It's hard not to watch Hard Knocks and be like, wait a second, the Rams are still really good too, right? Like, goodness gracious, they have a really good secondary. They have a really good offensive line. They have what they think is a very good rookie running back and a good quarterback and coach. Like, the Rams, people are saying, be the fourth team in the division. Still tough. And then you got the Cardinals, who I think are going to be absolutely fantastic. So it's tough overall, but Seattle, come on. Right? I mean, come on, Russell Wilson, Carroll. It's, it's, it's too much fun. It's too much fun to not pick Seattle. It's got to be Seattle. Um, if Barrett doesn't play – you think we'll get another cornerback? No, they won't get another cornerback because they have Mosey and Witherspoon. Right? Like, they weren't really expecting Brett to start at the beginning of training camp. They would have all expected Emmanuel Mosey to do it. He's just been able to recover and play better than a lot of people expected. And so you kind of have a luxury of having him in there. But obviously they're going to keep Witherspoon and uh, – and uh, I'm blanking right now, sorry uh, – Witherspoon and Mosley. And so they'll just play one of those two to start. That's basically what they're Make sure you guys are subscribed because we're going to do the best 49er coverage, not just this offseason, as we've done. And hats off to all the guys at Chat Sports. They've done a great job covering San Francisco. But the offseason is basically in the rear view. So the best coverage going into the regular season. I mean, we're going to break down all sorts of stuff regarding the 49ers week in and week out. So make sure you guys are subscribed for that. The link, as always, is down below in the description box. Um, let's see here. Uh, if Sherman does good this year, will we sign him? And do you think he'll guys a lot of money? Okay. So I've had, I, I asked this question a couple weeks ago. I think he will play well th this year, but he is in a contract year. And the question is, how many more years can he play? Three years ago, he said he had two to three years left. So you kind of do the math. After this year, you have about two years left. So I would love to sign Sherman to a two-year deal at not elite cornerback price, because he's not. I mean, like, he's still a great cornerback, and he probably still is in elite class, but you can't pay him another elite contract. But a little bit of a discount, you know, top 15% in the National Football League. He's going to ask for a lot, but he should probably understand that the market won't be very good for him because he's going to be so old. And he likes San Francisco, and he probably has the best chance to win if he stays in San Francisco. So I think they'll get the deal done. 
Excuse me. Unless, unless they have a bad year, he gets injured, and then obviously they just let him walk. Um, Et. A lot of questions from Et. Who'll be the 49ers' best player this year? Um. Geez, that is tough. I think Fred Warner. I think if you, I mean, like overall best player, probably Fred Warner. And it's tough because I mean, Mostert could be the best player. Kittle could be the best player. Trent Williams could be the best player. Garoppolo would be great if he was the best player. I mean, that'd be fantastic. I'll ask you guys right here. Let me know who you think the best player is on the 49ers. I think Warner. I think overall Warner. I mean, Nick Bosa could be there. Sherman could be there. War could be there. It's hard to pick. It's actually really hard to pick. Let me know what you guys think down below right now in the comment section. Um, give me those comments in the comment section down below.